You mean Tierra Marie? Yeah, everybody need to double back and talk about her a little bit more too. Because they sat there and they enjoyed watching her crash out on Love and Hip Hop LA. But nobody bothered to take it, take into consideration that that girl was a victim. I'm my prom, getting out the shower, and I got a call from Jay Brown, who works for Jay-Z. And he just told me, you know, he's a nice run kiddo, but, you know, <laughs> gotta let you go. Definitely a mentor. He was like a father figure. He was a great guy. I learned a lot from Jay, so. Many people have always blamed Rihanna for the downfall of Tierra Mari, but no one has ever bothered to take time and learn what actually went down. This story goes way further than Rihanna's debut in the music industry. So why did Tierra's career really flop? Jay-Z is known for his keen eye for talent, and one of his major moves was signing Rihanna to Def Jam, catapulting her to superstardom. But here's an interesting tidbit. Even before Rihanna, there was Tierra Marie on the label, quietly being prepared for the spotlight. Jay-Z saw immense potential in Tierra, often referring to her as the princess of Def Jam. Yeah. Okay, and she's the first lady of the rock. She's the princess. Now, we all know that Jay is not one to just hand out compliments, so his saying Tierra was the princess of Def Jam meant that she was actually good at her craft. Tierra collaborated with Jay Z on his inaugural project as the president of Def Jam Records. Their joint effort resulted in the creation of Make Her Feel Good, the lead single from Tierra's debut album on Rockefeller slash Def Jam. The track, produced by Sean Garrett, made waves by reaching number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100 and securing the ninth position on the R&B charts. While it gained substantial traction on BET, its presence on MTV remained relatively subdued. The momentum continued with the release of the second single, No Daddy, accompanied by a video that propelled it to commercial success on MTV. The video's popularity was evident as it spent a remarkable 16 days on Total Request Live, peaking at number four, but all that was before our girl Riri joined the mix. In 2005, Rihanna was discovered by American record producer Evan Rogers in her home country of Barbados. The 16-year-old's demo was then sent to Def Jam Recordings, where it was played to the company's new CEO, Jay-Z. Jay-Z invited Rihanna to audition, and Riri left the audition with a six-album record deal. I was able to audition comfortably, and he was impressed by the audition, and he didn't let me leave until 3 in the morning after I signed the deal. And, um, there are two ways to leave here. Either through the door with the deal sign, or through this window, and we're on the 29th floor. <laughs> it wasn't long before Riri then released her first album, Music of the Sun, which sold over 2 million copies worldwide. It was then in May 2005, the world was graced with the anthem that is Pond de Replay, meaning play it again in Bashan Creole, one of the official languages of Rihanna's home country Barbados. The track had appeared on her original demo that landed her that record deal. The song sold a whopping 2 million copies, charting top 10 in the UK, US and across the globe. But despite her songs getting so much traction, the record label was still unsure of her. The CEO of Def Jam, Lareed, recounted not being involved in Rihanna's career because he was focused on developing Tierra. I signed Rihanna and we had a showcase. And at the showcase, there were two artists performing, her name paying a little more attention to her than I was to Rihanna. Tierra Marie was the favorite because she had the whole package. She possessed undeniable talent, a remarkable singing voice, and an electrifying stage presence. Moreover, she exuded an authentic, around-the-way girl image, embodying everything Reed was looking for. This is why he was initially more invested in her. However, all it took was one strategic statement from Beyonce to get Tierra out the door, and Rihanna replacing her. After the showcase, you know, Beyonce just gave me one of those looks, and he said, that Rihanna girl, she's a beast. And she looked away, right? And I was like, so I did a Rihanna double take. Beyonce urged Reed to pay attention to this island girl, Rihanna, because she possessed something Tierra lacked, a distinctive Caribbean flavor and innate star power. While Rihanna's voice might not have been as robust as Tierra's, it was incredibly unique and flexible, capable of seamlessly transitioning across various genres from dancehall to R&B, pop, and even rock. In Beyonce's perspective, Rihanna had an undeniable edge over Tierra Marie. However, word on the grapevine claims that there was more to this. Apparently, Beyonce rooted for Riri because she found out that Jay-Z was allegedly messing with Tierra. What's more, Louisiana Reed also allegedly slept with Tierra as soon as he discovered her. Mind you, Reed is 31 years older than Tierra. It seems Beyonce caused quite the commotion because not long after, Tierra was dropped by Jay-Z. 
Tierra, on the brink of her high school graduation, received a life-altering phone call from the label. The disheartening news delivered was that she was being dropped from the label. From my prom, getting out the shower, and I got a call from Jay Brown, who works for Jay-Z, and he just told me, you know, he's a nice run, kiddo, but, you know, <laughs> gotta let you go. This sudden and seemingly arbitrary decision left Tierra bewildered, and the abrupt cessation of communication with Jay-Z added a layer of mystery to the entire ordeal. Tierra also revealed that Jay-Z was like a father figure to her, and she was disappointed in how he let her go. Definitely a mentor. He was like a father figure. He was a great guy. I learned a lot from Jay, so. Rumor has it that one of the reasons behind her departure from Def Jam was the controversial nature of her music. With a parental advisory slapped on her album, it meant her tunes required a nod from the folks before purchase, a move that didn't sit well with many parents. Back then, what flew in terms of lyrical content wasn't quite as liberal as it is now. Fans were left shook by the explicit themes in her songs, raising eyebrows at the fact that a 17-year-old was crooning about adult matters. From steamy encounters to tangled relationships with a shady boyfriend dealing drugs, it seemed like she was diving headfirst into territory way beyond her years. Anyway, Tierra's music journey turned out to be quite the roller coaster ride, and not in the glamorous way we'd expect. Despite her initial buzz with the release of Sponsor, she soon faded into the shadows, only to resurface on the reality show Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. But let's just say, her stint on the show didn't exactly do wonders for her reputation. From messy relationship drama to battling alcoholism and even facing off with 50 Cent in a legal showdown, Tierra found herself in the midst of one scandal after another. Meanwhile, Rihanna, sensing trouble on the horizon, managed to steer clear of Tierra's turbulent path. Though she faced her own challenges, including almost getting dropped from her label, Rihanna's team fought tooth and nail for her singles like S.O.S. and Umbrella, which ultimately saved her from obscurity. But even Rihanna wasn't immune to drama. After receiving some disastrous business advice, she had to bid adieu to her management team and financial advisors, narrowly avoiding a financial catastrophe. By 2007, Rihanna had a new hairdo, a larger clothing budget, and more compatible collaborators like the Dream and Christopher Tricky Stewart. Almost immediately after that, with the release of Umbrella, the debut single from her third album, Good Girl Gone Bad, things began to take off. The song was written with Mary J. Blige in mind, but Blige herself later admitted that Rihanna was a better fit. Blige said MTV News about Rihanna after explaining that she couldn't perform with her because of scheduling conflicts. She's such a beautiful lady, and I love her to death. I was so glad that she caught it and knocked it out of the park, and it's still one of my favorite songs to date. The album, which also featured the massive single Don't Stop the Music, went on to receive multiple platinum certifications and become a worldwide phenomenon. In response to her meteoric rise to stardom, Re released a remastered version of her breakthrough album, Good Girl Gone Bad, reloaded, and embarked on a world tour. As time went on, she continued to release platinum albums, including 2009's Rated R, 2010's Loud, 2011's Talk That Talk, and 2012's Unapologetic. Other top songs include Rude Boy, Only Girl in the World, S&M, We Found Love, Diamonds, and many more. Rihanna, however, did not stop with music. She followed in Jay-Z's footsteps, establishing successful enterprises such as Fenty Beauty, Fenty Skin, Savage X Fenty, and many fragrance and fashion lines. Rihanna stated in a 2019 interview that her profession is her mission and that it should never feel anything other than a happy place. We all know that the two have had a long and tight relationship, with Jay functioning as Rihanna's mentor and employer, as well as a collaborator on some of her best singles. But here's the burning question, has their connection ever gone beyond the professional? The answer, according to celebrity biographer J. Randy Tarabarelli, is a resounding yes. Tarabarelli alleges in his autobiography, Becoming Beyonce, The Untold Story, that Jay and Rihanna were romantically linked in 2005, while Jay was promoting Rihanna's breakthrough single, Pondy Replay. According to the author, Beyonce felt so unhappy with the circumstance that she and Jay separated for a year. Rihanna admitted in a candid interview with The Guardian that rumors were the bane of her existence when she first signed with Def Jam. Worst of all, rumors circulated that she and Queen Bey were feuding. At first it was funny, then it was frustrating, because it got really intense where people just weren't letting up. 
Rihanna lamented. Since they began dating in 2002, Beyonce and Jay-Z's relationship has been scrutinized. With allegations of adultery and conflict swirling around the power couple, it's no surprise that fans have been watching their every move. Following the release of Beyonce's self-titled album in 2014, the most noteworthy claims against Jay-Z and Beyonce's marriage surfaced. Many fans were left wondering if there was problems in paradise after hearing songs about heartbreak, betrayal, and forgiveness on the album. Several songs on the album's lyrics alluded to adultery, such as, He only want me when I'm not there, he better call Becky with the good hair in sorry. Despite the speculations, Jay-Z and Beyonce have kept silent about the status of their marriage. Jay-Z finally addressed the adultery charges in a 2016 interview with the New York Times saying, the hardest thing is seeing pain on someone's face that you caused and then have to deal with yourself. He also revealed that he and Beyonce had been going to therapy to work through their troubles, so there was definitely more to the whole thing than met the eye. In any case, although many people felt that Riri's presence in Def Jam Records caused Tierra to be dropped by the label, Tierra has already cleared up the air on that, and wouldn't you know, the two artists were actually friends despite being pitted against each other. I love her. She's never done anything to me. So do you feel like, do, are you ever mad at the industry for pitting you all against each other or continuously? No, because it's just, you know, par for the course, honey. Really? Yes. All in all, Tierra's journey as an artist faced obstacles early on, hindering her growth and artistic evolution. T.I. commented in an interview that she lacked the maturity required to navigate the music industry, a sentiment echoed by many. The industry often treats teenagers as adults, expecting them to mature rapidly, exposing them to environments and experiences not suitable for their age. In 2008, Tierra signed with Violator but later opted for a deal with For Real, the parent company of Dirty Entertainment. She embarked on the production of her album, collaborating with renowned producers such as Rico Love, The Runners, and The Underdogs. Her singles featuring artists like Soulja Boy, Gucci Mane, Nicki Minaj, Kanye West, and others hinted at promising success. However, setbacks emerged when the album's tracks were leaked, prompting the label to postpone its release. Despite the potential for hits, such as Hunt For You, the album faced challenges. Additionally, the significance of music videos, especially during that era, cannot be overstated, yet the lack of proper promotion hindered Tierra's prospects. Tierra dabbled in mixtapes and acting roles between 2009 and 2012, demonstrating versatility beyond music. Unfortunately, she made the decision to join Love & Hip Hop full-time in 2014, a move criticized by many. Reality television, though beneficial for exposure, can tarnish reputations, particularly for those dealing with personal personal struggles or mental health issues. In any case, Tierra is gradually making her return to the music scene, and we can only anticipate that she'll emerge with newfound wisdom and a stronger grasp on her musical direction. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.